Hi, Mike and Arlen, our Philippine journey. Today's video is a little bit different, but still along the same string of things. Is it time for you to invest in the Philippines? Take a look at Asia, see what's going on. Is it something you even want to consider? Let's explore that because I think you'll be surprised. I never got it what you have to go. I guess this world's too slow for you. I think there's beauty in the gray, the cold, but you just want the gold. And there's no way I can beat it cause I got no chance, no chance when it comes to her. She got the glitter and the fame and I, I just wasn't enough. So, here in the Philippines, we, uh, we, we look at news from a lot of different sources, obviously. And let me just preface all of this. My medical career paid me extremely well. But my entrepreneurial career paid me far better. I have an extensive background in what we're going to talk about. Now, Let's just take a look at a couple of different things, okay? Um, China's economy is doing horribly. And when I say horribly, I mean it's beyond horribly. And the problem with that is, is it affects everybody that is in the supply chain for China. Where do you think all of that material comes from? How do you think they do trade with Vietnam, Cambodia, all those other places? You have to only look at the news. If you're in America, it doesn't make. And if you're in the UK, it may not make. I don't watch. I do watch BBC, but I don't watch a whole lot. Um, it doesn't generally make headline news. Now, we or I extensively watch Chinese markets, things that are happening there. In addition to that, I watch Vietnamese markets, Japanese markets, and of course, Philippine markets. And they are different. And I'm going to tell you why. And then I'm going to tell you why their in real estate investments may be different. Um, what we consider a robust economy is one where there are jobs, where there are businesses, and things are ticking along just the way they are. The problem in China is, is the numbers that come out are highly skewed, number one. They don't make any sense, number two. And they're controlled, and they're going to have to print whatever it is the government tells them to print. But if we look at other countries, okay? Let's look at um, Vietnam. Vietnam is seeing its real estate market fall to the floor. Absolute devastation is happening in some parts of Vietnam, especially in Ho Chi Minh. Okay? If we look at Japan, um, their weird property tax things, I mean, they give away houses, literally. Um, the Japanese market is so overpriced that nobody can do anything with it. The government props it up. And jobs are becoming much more harder to find, keep, and get paid a sustainable wage. Um, South Korea. South Korea has one of the strongest economies in Southeast Asia. However, I worry about South Korea because of their weird as hell mortgage concept. And I, I'm just not going to go into describing how their concept of mortgages work. They have traditional mortgages, and then they have these non-traditional mortgages that were crazy as crap. Um, it's just really weird. However, let's look at the Philippine economy. And... Um, I think it's important for you to recognize Filipinos are vastly different. Even their corporate structures are vastly or run vastly different. Um, Filipinos 
don't buy nearly as much on credit as other countries. They buy as they can. And I'm telling you, the markets here are still great. Now, do you want to invest in in, um, a condo? Let's skip the land issue right now. And let's just talk about condos for a minute. I'll tell you, yeah, and I'll tell you why. The rents are so strong and the rents remain strong because people are still going to work. Okay. People still have to have places to live. And because expats and foreign investors buy. Now, would I buy in BGC or Makati? No, I wouldn't. I really think that market is very saturated. But would I look at some other places? Yes, I would. But I have to think about why. And then I have to remember something else that's really important. Why would you buy real estate if you're 65, 55, 75 years old? Why would you do that? Why would you spend $150,000 to $350,000 when you've got a limited time span? Why wouldn't you just rent something nice that works for you and use that money to live off of? Well, there's a couple of different reasons. The first one is the taxable situation. Unless you've set up trusts and you've put things into your trusts in America, whatever money you have left over, if it's a cash-on-cash transaction, your children or whoever that money goes to could be taxed on it number one. But from the Philippines, property is not. And you can give, in other words, I could leave our condo to my daughter today. I could put it in her name today. And the Philippines doesn't give a shit. As long as the property is administered correctly, it doesn't care. And um, there are rules about rentals, but, you know, there are great management companies out there. And yeah, they take a cut. Of course they do. But my point is, is, is that it's easy and it's a long-term source of income down the road for somebody else, a legacy perhaps. You know, if you marry a Filipina and she has land, or they have family land, and you're smart enough to actually get that land surveyed, parceled out, titled, and then you build on it, that's the best of all worlds. Now, the second one would be buy land if you're married to a Filipino. Again, you know, a lot of people, you're going to argue with me. Oh, I would never, you know, put myself at risk. And then, ah, fuck it. You know what? Um, I could take a risk just, uh, you know, we're going out to dinner shortly, uh, and I could take a risk just going out and catching a trike, okay? So, I mean, there's all kinds of risks involved. What I'm trying to get at is, is right now the U.S. dollar is doing extremely well in the Philippines. Number two, there are great deals to be had. And number three, in comparison to many other places, I mean, I think probably the strongest real estate market in Southeast Asia is actually Taiwan. And then you have to sit there and think, well, what's going to happen when it comes to the Philippines market? Isn't it going to build a bubble just like it does everywhere else? Well, sure it will. It absolutely will. But you want to be in that market before there's a bubble, and you don't want to need to sell it to make money. You certainly don't want to do that, okay? What you do want to do is be in a country that is going to be robust. The Philippines is a slow-growth country. But I will tell you something. You don't have to look further than down the street to find Filipinos that have far more money than you do, or me. 
There are people in the Philippines that are extremely rich. There are a lot of people in the Philippines, a lot of Filipinas that aren't extremely rich, but are still rich. And then there are even more Filipinos whose net worth because of businesses and land holdings and agriculture and everything that goes along with that, they're very, very well off. Don't think of this as being a poor country. It just hasn't reached that critical mass of movement yet between the government and everything else that goes along with it. And because the Philippines has such a relationship with the U.S., it's not going to go back on what's already been enacted. Could they do something one day that says you can't buy condos as a foreigner? Sure. But they're not going to fuck over a bunch of expats from multiple countries that are supporting them in protecting their sovereign waters and land. Consider it. I know it's a lot to think about, and I know it, it, it ranges in different ways, but I still think that there's plenty, there are plenty of good valuable real estate transactions worth looking at. If you're a single guy, forget looking at land, forget the land leases and things like that. That's that's just all bullshit. If you've got millions, you may want to consider the Foreign Investment Act, but let's face it, most of the people with millions and millions of dollars like that aren't watching YouTube and really aren't interested in building a house in the Philippines. Okay. But condos, yes, there's an opportunity there. And it's an opportunity that will go on. And I highly believe in it. Now, again, I go back to the fact of what about the married couples and they buy a house with their wife. There are ways to protect yourself. All right, but it's still going to be 50-50, buddy, at, a, at the minimum, at the minimum, and it may be far worse, okay? But that's okay. Arlen owns 100% of our property and home in Mindanao, and I'm fine with that. I have no problem whatsoever, okay? And... She's set up nicely with property for future investments. Think about what you could do. Think about how you could use that money. If you can get an ROI of about 7%, you're going to beat the stock market in many instances over a 10-year period. Okay? Um, Now, that's... You know what? I shouldn't say that. That's not necessarily true. Depends on what type of mix you have, what type of bonds, this, that, the other. But you do see what I'm saying. A solid investment getting you 7% is nothing to shake your ass at. All right? Stay away. Absolutely stay away from investments in China, investments in uh, Vietnam, Cambodia, Even uh, um, India is taking an ass whooping right now, okay? Stores are closed everywhere. Here in the Philippines, they do close, and then they open again. There's always somebody reopening, always somebody going. So I think the economy here is good, and I think the future here is good. So it's something you should consider. On the other hand, Property is not for everybody, and quite frankly, it may not be for you, Um, and I fully understand that, and I don't don't think that's a bad thing. If it's not something you're into, it's not something that's worthwhile, but I do think for those of you that are looking at it, it's something you should consider. Otherwise, hey, please do subscribe, hit that thumbs up, hit that notify bell, And we'll see you on the next one. Thanks. Have a great day.